Great to be here. It's been, uh, like Chris said, several years uh, since we've all been here in person. Um, and so thank you. Thank you for, as Shai said, for supporting Elastic, for being not just great practitioners, but great advisors. To me, much like for Shai and for the others that you're going to meet uh, today, learning from you means we can do a better job of evolving the technology evolving our investments, continuing to do a better job of serving you. So thank you, keep that coming. And it's, it's particularly interesting for me because most of you might not have even appreciated this, but last year we celebrated 10 years of Elastic as a company. So it's been an interesting journey. We started with very humble roots. For those of you who don't know the story behind Shai and uh, you know, his, uh, his effort to build a recipe application, um, something that he was doing for his wife, seemed to take on a life of its own. I don't know if she ever got her recipe application, but we got Elasticsearch. So I think it was a fair trade. Uh, but what came out of it was this, this notion of building something, as Shai describes it, a search platform. To me, it's the ability to use search to search across data that is inherently difficult to work with. When you're dealing with unstructured data, when you're dealing with complex data, irrespective of whether it's machine generated or whether it's human generated, there are complexities to it. How do you bring that all in? How do you make it analyzable? How do you make it visualizable? All of that is what started this journey of Elastic. And it started, Shai talked about communities and learning from each other. It started by definition, not just in open source, but by bringing together wonderful minds. Shai is one of our four co-founders, and he is the guy who wrote Elasticsearch. So, you know, he's probably one of the, the smartest, most non-lateral thinkers that I've ever met when it comes to technology. But he knew that the power really gets amplified when you work with each other. And so Elastic's journey always involved coming together with others who could complement us, whether it was other founders, like in the times when Shai started the company, or like with our community. So it started with Logstash and Kibana creating the Elk stack. It's like, it's unbelievable how popular that terminology elk is. And it took on its own flavors of elky and all kinds of interesting mascots and so on. But elk, no matter what part of the world you go to and developers you speak to, everybody knows about elk. Everybody knows about the technologies that came together to form this wonderful platform. And the first few years were all about building the core of this platform. And the next five years, were all about, as Shai mentioned, bringing together the capabilities that would allow us to deliver on these use cases of security, of observability, of various forms of search as applied to e-commerce, workplace search, etc. That's what has allowed us to become the company that we are. Bringing together of wonderful ideas, all in this notion of how do we create a platform that allows us to get better insights out of data in real time, in a massively scalable manner, in such a way that it allows you to do what you need to do for your business? It's been 10 years, 10 years of all kinds of searches, searching for rides, searching for restaurants, searching for threats, searching for anomalies, searching for whatever it is that makes your mission successful. The public sector has been just this wonderful place for us, not just to learn, but also to get this sense of we are actually serving the community. We are doing things that make us proud. More often than not, we can't tell anybody, even if we know sometimes how you're using our technology, we can't tell others. But believe me, those of us who work with you have tremendous pride because of the great work that all of you are doing. So thank you for that. It's been 10 years 
of collaborating with the community. And these numbers are already a little stale. At this point, we've had over 4 billion downloads of our technology over the years, cumulatively. When you look at just the awareness, the community adoption, the developer love for Elastic, this is what propels us further. We are one of the most popular open source projects of all time. And it is because of all of you. It is because of all of you and users in other industries, in other verticals, in other parts of the world. It is because of the way you have found unique, interesting opportunities to use Elasticsearch and various parts of the Elastic platform. So thank you for that. So we look at our mission very simply as helping you get insights out of all of your data through the power of search. That's what it's about. There are lots of platforms out there that let you do this when it comes to structured data, when it comes to semi-structured data. But when you're trying to do this with all data, and you're dealing with unstructured data, and you need to do this in real time, that is an incredibly complex problem. You need to be able to ingest everything. You need to be able to index it, make it searchable, make it analyzable. You need to be able to visualize it. All of this in real time. That notion of exploration is so critical. We've seen it in the way we use consumer products for searching things on the web. And we see it with Elastic when we are able to search across all of our data, the messiest data that we might have for our own missions. And then on top of this, in that platform, in a completely vertically integrated manner, the ability to use bespoke workflows, bespoke dashboards, to make sure that you can get the outcomes that you want for monitoring your systems, for observability, for securing your environments, for cybersecurity, and then search for all the search use cases that you might have, searching across all the data in your data lakes, searching across geospatial data, whatever it might be, that is the core mission, a unified platform. And the problems that we solve today have evolved to the point where almost 40% of our usage that we see across the world ends up being for the kinds of use cases that involve what people describe as observability. Whether it's application performance monitoring, whether it's log analytics, whether it's being able to correlate traces with metrics, with logs, to quickly bring down bean time to resolution for issues that your site reliability engineering teams discover. That is a big part of what we do today for our customers. Cybersecurity now is almost 25% of our usage. Shai described his story of being here not that long ago and seeing firsthand, learning from how customers were using us for security. And since then, the work that we've been able to do now has resulted in almost 25% of our customers, of our usage, being all around cybersecurity. And then the remaining third is all about the various forms of search use cases, geospatial just being one of them. Because fundamentally, observability, security, much like search itself, are all data problems. They're problems where you're trying to quickly get insights out of massive amounts of data. Using heuristics, using machine learning models, doesn't really matter how you get that sense of relevance, but it's about getting insights out of all of that data. So, what's new? What have we been working on in these last three years? 
since we've had the opportunity to be here in front of all of you in person. So I talked about the fact that, you know, over the years we've been building out this platform and our vision when it comes to observability has been very simple. The data that is involved in giving you the ability to monitor your entire stack, all the way from the infrastructure through the application, all the microservices that constitute your application, all the way to the end browser. It involves getting visibility across various layers of the stack. Everything from logging, APM, infrastructure monitoring, synthetics, real user monitoring, so on and so forth. Unified observability, the ability to connect the dots. And doing this becomes incredibly hard at scale if you don't have the freedom to think about observability your way. You know your end user's journey through your applications. You need to have the flexibility to model how you look at observability in such a way that it makes sense for you. That means customizability to be able to change the way you track things, how you describe what a distributed transaction is. How are you going to look at tracing end to end? That is unified observability, being able to go all the way from the metrics of the infrastructure to the traces to the actual log lines. And then, I'll talk about it in a second, even look at the profiles, the state of the CPU, the state of the memory. So you can actually understand what's going on, debug quickly, and do it with as much automation as humanly possible. So in the 7.x series, as most of you know, we are on the 8.x series in terms of just where we are in our product roadmap. And Steve's going to talk a lot about this as well. But in 7.x, it was all about building the foundation. This was a, f a couple of years ago. Building out our core APM functionality. Developing a unified agent. Because our view has always been that the fewer moving pieces you have to deploy on your end systems, the better it is. Not just from a developer standpoint, but just from an IT standpoint to manage all of that complexity. Because that takes effort. Deploying agents onto systems takes effort. Takes a lot of careful planning. All of this was part of what we did in the 7.x series. Open telemetry was another big bet that we made. We believe in open standards. We are absolutely committed to being open. So open telemetry was another big push from our side. In the 8.x series, we then started evolving one step further, AI ops. We've had our machine learning functionality built into our platform for the last many years now. But taking everything that we had there and building very specific anomaly detection capabilities that were suitable for observability, what people describe as AI ops. Being able to automate root cause analysis. How do you very quickly try and get someone to understand where the potential errors and issues might lie that are slowing down your application? We started really working on that in the 8.x series, adding capabilities all the way in what people describe as shift left to also deliver observability into your CI CD pipelines. This work was not unnoticed. Today, Forrester considers us to be a strong performer in the AI ops wave. Considering how recent of a player we are in this space, we're only 10 years old as a company, and we really started getting into observability only in the last four years, four to five years. And I just talked to you about when we started really investing in our AI ops and 
unified observability. But we are already seen as a strong performer. And there's ways to go, and we will. So where's the future in observability? And by the way, a lot of this functionality is already available. So I would definitely recommend that when you have the time during the, the Ask Me Anything session, the demo sessions that we have later today, check this out or go talk to your Elastic experts, not today, but even in the future and ask them about it, learn more about it. Continuous profiling, this idea to be able to continuously look at the profiles of the systems that your applications are running on, to try and optimize, to try and find what is driving poor performance within your applications. All based on eBPF, extended Berkeley packet filter, the ability to look at the kernel from user space and really understand what is going on on your system. Cloud synthetics. Synthetic monitoring is another key area that we've invested in. And lastly, AI ops. So a lot that we've been doing in observability. So let me switch to security for a second then. Most of the conversations that I've had here yesterday with customers, with many of you, have all, many of them have been around security. Our vision on security was, was very simple. Why just observe when you can also protect? You're deploying those agents to collect data from all of those end systems, to monitor those systems. Wouldn't it be nice if we allowed you to also detect security threats, and then better yet, act on those threats to protect your systems, the things that we can do through those agents. So although we started with this notion of SIM, we very quickly started expanding our capabilities to include what people describe as XTR. Across threat vectors, being able to do detection, and response. And then cloud security, because obviously as many of you are moving your workloads to the cloud, the cloud's becoming an area that you absolutely need to secure. So how do you bring that in into the same environment so through one console you can do all your detections, you can do your threat hunting, you can go from your alert to all your run books, your detailed threat hunting as you might need to, and then take remedial action without needing to go across different systems, all from that one console. That was the vision, that's what we've been working on. So we started in the 7.x series again by first unifying SIM, endpoint security, and XTR. So everything from the detection rules that we built the investigation workflows that we created, the alerting functionality that we built, capabilities like EQL and timeline, all of that came in the 7.x series, including the endpoint integration. The technology that we acquired when we joined forces with endgame systems, all of the, the ransomware protection and the malware protection capabilities integrating that into the agent. All of that happened in the 7.x series. In the 8.x series then, we started adding more to it, optimizing the analyst workflows, making it that much easier to bring in third-party threat intel feeds, starting all the work that we did on cloud security. Very quickly, the work that we've been doing has been recognized again. We are considered to be a leader in the Forrester wave on security analytics. It has been just two to three years since we've really entered into the security area. So we are very proud of the progress that we have made, but I have to admit that this has come about because of the community involvement, because of users like yourself and others. The feedback that you've given us has made us better. Because we 
take great pride in the fact that our users are some of the most technically sophisticated users out there, bar none. You push us, so thank you. This has happened not just because of our teams, but because of us and the work that we've done together. So where are we going from here? What are we doing today? We heard loud and clear that our customers, our users, were looking for the ability to automate and orchestrate response actions. But they wanted to be able to do it, not in the old school way, but they wanted to be able to make it scriptable. So we built this notion of native response actions. Threat intelligence management, being able to bring in third party feeds from other tip platforms, integrate it, manage that data within our platform. And then cloud workload protection and cloud workload posture management. Functionality that we started developing when we joined forces with CMD and Build Security. Both these companies that we joined forces with in 2021. Entity analytics. It's another key area that our customers have been asking for. All of this work is work that we've been doing. So that was security. So where are we going with enterprise search? This is the area that started it all. It was little, it was Shai's little, you know, recipe thingy that took on a life of its own. Enterprise search is just the collection of all the various different search use cases that we see our customers using us for. Our mission has always been the same. Make it incredibly easy for you to search everything, everywhere in real time. Kind of almost sounds like the name of that new movie. In the 8.x series though, in 8.0 was the first time that we delivered vector search capabilities. With vector search, especially when you couple it with what you can do with machine learning to build your vectors, you can now apply the power of Elastic to search more effectively against images, against audio, against all kinds of interesting data not just the traditional ranking mechanisms, but now you have hybrid ranking mechanisms taking advantage of both what you can do with vector search and your traditional relevance models. And more work that we did in the area of natural language processing. So tremendous amount of new capabilities in this area. And again, our work has been recognized. We are considered to be the leader with the strongest vision of any out there when it comes to search. And we're very proud of that. And we're gonna continue evolving everything that we're doing in this area further. The last area I wanna talk about is the fact that, and Chris touched upon this right from the get-go, we see what we are building as a platform as a platform, because we want to make it possible for you to use the technology in many, many different ways so you can maximize the value that you're getting out of your investments. Your investments, not only in you know, the licenses and services that you purchase, but in your time, in the time and effort that you take to learn our technology to train your teams on our technology. That's expense. We want you to be able to maximize the value that you get from all your investments. How can you do more on our platform? And the value of building this kind of a platform that has all of these different capabilities, whether it's observability, security, search use cases, it's very simple. When we build this platform, we can develop things in it that help us deliver better, more, across multiple different use cases. 
And so we have a platform team that just focuses on how do we make it possible for you to save costs on data storage, to accelerate what you're doing? How do we improve query performance in such a way that it helps everything? That is the goal of this platform team. Streamlining, making things more efficient, making it possible for you to take advantage of that across everything that you do on Elastic. So, whether it's about the ability that we have delivered through searchable snapshots and our various tiers of storage, especially frozen tier, where you can store massive amounts of data in low cost object storage and still make it completely searchable without having to rehydrate everything. Those kinds of capabilities allow you to use our system for analyzing, searching across data in more efficient ways at lower costs to work with more data than you possibly could in the past with better economics. All of those capabilities are what this team is focused on. So where are we taking the future of the stack? And this is just a precursor to what Steve's gonna be presenting in just a minute. But the first big area for us, we want to make sure that we are optimizing the system truly for all types of data. One of the areas that we got feedback from our customers was on time series data. How can you make it possible for our users to store, query, and manage metrics data more efficiently than in the past. So that's been an area of active work and development for us. The second is just the query language sophistication. How do we make it possible for you to create and use more complex queries so your work can be done more efficiently. Can be do in one step, when in the past you used to take three steps. And I won't steal Steve's thunder, so I'll let him talk about ESQL, but there's a lot that we are doing in this area. And what I want you to keep in mind when he presents on this topic is the applicability of the work across all use cases. Doesn't matter whether you're using Elastic for protecting your systems, cybersecurity use cases, for observability, or for search use cases. The work that is done by this team to truly improve the capabilities of the platform are fundamental. They improve everything. And then the third area, big area of investment, a serverless architecture, a stateless architecture. How do we make Elasticsearch stateless? And all interesting things come from there. How do we make it such that you don't have to worry about shards? How do we make it such that you don't have to worry too much about sizing? How do we make it such that it's a seamless, even more seamless experience for you? That is the future of the Elastic Stack. There's a lot that we are doing here. There's a lot that we are excited about. There's a lot that we want to talk to all of you about today and through the coming months and quarters. And as always, we look forward to your feedback. And we are going to make this always available wherever you are. In the cloud, in public cloud, and in what we call self-managed mode, where you're purchasing licenses from us and deploying it. And we understand that you have your own unique constraints because of which public cloud might not be an option for you. We absolutely understand that. We're gonna make it possible for you to take maximum advantage of public cloud when you can and deploy things in your own data centers 
when that's the right option for you. And towards that end, we work incredibly closely with all the hyperscalers. So, in summary, it's been a 10, it's been amazing 10 years, but you know, when you're at that 10 year mark, you kind of feel like you're full of energy, you understand your potential and you truly are excited about it, but you're still a little clunky. I have three young kids, so I kind of understand the, the dynamics of that age. But what makes me incredibly optimistic is the support that we get from all of you. As with kids and raising kids, the community matters. In the same way, I feel like we are this 10 year old that has been able to do some amazing things because of the community. And it is this community built on the core fundamentals that Shai started, making sure that everything that we did was always in the open. Those open source roots, that to me is what makes me excited. So thank you again. Enjoy the rest of the day and let me.